Greetings, undercover professor here in disguise, performing some secret experiments out here in the field. Today's experiment is how much solar does it take to run an air conditioner? Now I have a 6,000 BTU in my RV and I have a certain amount of solar outside. I'm gonna show you guys that right now I'm running my air conditioner for free. So right here I have a 400 watt EcoFlow panel combined in series with two 200 watt Bouge RV glass panels. Now I have them all in series. This is 400 watts glass, 400 watts folding for a total of 800. And if you can see the panels on my roof, I have 300 watts of Renogy 100 watt panels up there. So 300 watts total on the roof. So that's 1100 watts of solar I have running today and I'm in Lake Havasu, Arizona. It's about 1 p.m. in the afternoon, so the sun is up about as high as it's gonna get and we have clear sky conditions as you can see. Okay, so we're now back in my RV. I have this Frigidaire 6000 BTU air conditioner with soft start built in and I have it running at its highest setting or lowest temperature of 60 degrees. It's keeping it really nice inside here on an 85 degree day. And as you can see, Odin is absolutely thrilled to be hanging out in here today, aren't you, buddy? The tail says it all. So if you can read this display here, this tells us how much power is going in or coming out of my batteries. And right now, we're only losing 27 watts. Now, right before I turned this camera on, I was gaining 100 watts. So it depends on sky conditions, temperature of the solar panels, and things like that. It's not a perfectly blue sky day. We do have a little bit of haze, a little bit of clouds coming in and out. But right now, it's about minus 30 watts. Now with three Battleborns on my system, I can literally run this air conditioner all day till the sun goes down for free and still have my batteries topped up. Right now my batteries are sitting at 88% and they will just stay that way all day long while I'm running the air conditioner. In fact, my batteries might fully charge depending on sky conditions. So for those daysayers out there that say you can't run an air conditioner off solar, I have 1100 watts here on my RV. I'm having no problems keeping it nice and chill inside here on an 85 degree day. And in fact, under the right sky conditions, I will actually top up my batteries too at the same time. Now I found that 11, 1200 watts of solar is about the minimum if you want to run a five to 6,000 BTU air conditioner. If you want to run a larger air conditioner, like a RV roof air conditioner, it's like 13 or 15,000 BTU, you're gonna need a lot more solar. Pretty much two to 3,000 watts, I'd say probably 2,500 watts would be minimum if you wanna be able to run your rooftop solar at the same time as charging your batteries. And I know most RVs can't handle that, but you can also put ground panels down like I do and get that extra wattage. Now I'm running three 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries in this RV. So I do have 300 amp hours of lithium in here. And that's more than enough for most of my needs. So let's do a little test. I just turned the air conditioner off and now I am getting a positive 490 watts in from all my solar. Now the roof solar is providing 172 watts. So let's go ahead and disconnect each individual section of panels outside and see how this number changes. Okay, so I've hooked up just this EcoFlow Flex panel, which is 400 watts. Let's go see what it says on the counter. All right, we're getting about 240 watts in the positive. So 250, oh, now it's climbing. So approximately 260 watts from just the 400 watt panel. Okay, now let's go ahead and hook up just the two 200 watt Bouge RV panels in series and see how much power difference we have. So now I have just these two glass 200 watt Bouge RV panels hooked up in series. Let's see what kind of power we get. Uh, we're clearly getting more power this time. We're getting about 280 watts out of the two 200 watt Bouge RV panels. So for those of you that think flex panels are the end all be all, they're not as efficient as glass panels. They almost never are. And let's talk about price. These two Bouge RV panels combined are approximately $300 to $320. This EcoFlow panel, which is 400 watts, retails for $1,000. So that tells you the difference between price. These two glass panels actually put out more power than this flex panel. Of course, the flex panel is more mobile, easy to set up, takes up less space, and weighs less than the glass panel. So you have to make a decision what's best for you. Now, if you're interested in these EcoFlow Flex panels, there is a link in the description if you wish to purchase them. These look a little bit beat up because I have had them outside in the desert and they have fallen over probably a half dozen times and gotten scraped up, but they work perfectly fine. 
Now these particular 200 watt Bouge RV panels are no longer for sale, but they work just the same as the regular Bouge RV 200 watt panels that are available. If you're interested in these panels, there's a link in the description with a coupon code that will give you a certain amount of money off. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Ant Medic Audio Repair, Andrew Vaughn, Roger Cardano, Ryan Lewis, Johnson, Jason Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenberg.